Hi, hello, good morning. How are you doing today? Okay, so this um, is going to be talking about CAC pre incorporation and post incorporation. What do we mean by pre incorporation and what do we mean by post incorporation? Yes, this is Moyosori Ojeleye, CEO of the Queen's Business and Consultancy Hub. So this morning, I'm going to be discussing about CAC Corporate Affairs Commission. What you need to know while incorporating your business and what you need to know after incorporating your business oftentimes we have clients and saying they don't even know what it is expected of them after uh, registering their business their uh, limited companies their foundation and all of that so today we're going to be discussing one-on-one -on, -one on that so firstly what is um who is cac what, what do they do what do they offer what was their own jurisdiction what, what, what are they capable of doing CAC is Corporate Affairs Commission. It is a federal parastatals which is in charge of your business uh, registration in Nigeria. So for any business that wants to uh, you know, take its operation in Nigeria, it has to be registered right there in Nigeria. They are the only um, regularized authority who is in charge of registering business owner, uh, businesses, sole proprietors, limited companies, NGO foundation associations and all of that. It is under Corporate Affairs Commission, and that is that on who CAC is and what they do. Now, another thing we want to talk about is pre incorporation and post incorporation. We said, what is pre incorporation? Pre incorporation is registering that business, registering your sole proprietorship, your venture, your enterprise, registering your limited company, your private limited by shares, your public company limited by shares, your unlimited companies, and uh, your association, your foundation, your churches, your mosque, your what have you, all the all kind of business here in Nigeria, charity organizations here in Nigeria. That is the process of registering all those um, forms of business, church, and associations. It is what they call pre incorporation services. So the process of you going into that business and registering it is what we call pre-incorporation. And what do you do there? You only go to the commission and tell them, okay, here, I want to register this um, business. Under what? Under, you register either as a business thing, which is for the sole proprietorship, the ventures, the enterprise, or you register as a limited company, the limited companies by shares, the private company limited by shares, the public limited company by shares, the guaranteed companies, the... Uh, association, the foundations, the church, the mosque, the charity organizations, what have you. So those things are what we call pre-incorporation. That process of registering whatever thing you have in mind is what we call pre-incorporation. What do we call post-incorporation? Post-incorporation simply means what are you doing after post, after you've registered? What, what happens after you've registered that business? What, happen, what, what has happened to that business? after registration so things on that post incorporation we have post incorporation services maybe after you've registered that business you want to change your director details you want to increase your director you want to increase your share capital as a form of you know your, your growth or as a result of growth as a result of you know management decisions and all of that so you want to have a new share shareholding you want to have a new sharing ratio you want to bring in more shareholders you want to bring in more directors all of that is called post incorporation. Now, another most important thing I need you to understand is okay, let me put that as what is expected of you after you've registered your business. Oftentimes, we see clients saying they don't even know what to do, and when we tell them about annual returns, they like, No, we don't know about annual returns. Nobody told us about annual returns. Anyways, if you are going through an agent, I mean, an agent is a chartered accountant, a lawyer, a chartered secretary, if you are going to any of them to register, your business they must have told you that yes you need to do annual returns immediately after you um you've registered your business that's like one year after you register that business so annual returns is another service is, a, is another obligations and it is under post incorporation services so it is another obligation for you as a business owner to take responsibility of that business year in year out so as you are filing for your tax returns to the FIRS, to the IRS, you should also have it in mind to file your annual returns to the Corporate Affairs Commissions. What is going to happen if you don't? Yeah. What happens if you don't file your annual returns? You get penalized. You have a 5,000 error penalty fee. 
and that doesn't even include the, the bank charges you have your your details on the corporate search removed now they're not going to be removed like going there intentionally to remove them those things doesn't update while they are updating their system because you don't have updated record of your business so while the commission is updating their own system your details is going out and eventually when you want to do your annual returns we need to start updating all your um uh, filling all your details again and again so when you don't file your annual returns as at when do you you get you at risk of losing your your image online you remember the search portal that we told you about where you can search for your uh, business name or search for any other name any other company name maybe you are trying to be going to partnership with a new company and you want to just verify their existence so once you get there and that company is already showing inactive now then what that signal to you is that that company has not been paying the annual returns and their their uh the informations on the portal is not even active it's not even updated they don't even know them and for 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 a while now if you do that consistently like more than 20 years or even not up to 20 years sometimes you might realize that that company is going to be delisted it's not only going to be delisted because you don't pay annual returns it's also going to be delisted because your up your records are not up to date they can't even verify you they can't even verify your your place of business any longer so those are the things you want to you know you want to question you want to you know avoid as much as possible so now what we tell people about uh, registering their business is that once you register your business have it in mind that your account deals in one year the following year you have to file for annual returns and annual returns is due uh, before the sixth month of the subsequent year the following year after your due date so now let's assume your your account is due this year january 2023 so your annual returns is expected to be filed january 2024 let's assume your business um, due date is december 2022 so what that means is that you're expected to file for 2023 now you can't file for 2023 until the end of 2023 so your grace period is from 31st december 2023 to the sixth month of june of um, 2024 which is june 38 2024 now you should file your business name your limited company your association your foundation you should file it before the end of that six months and in fact sometimes the penalty accrues even before the six months you'll be surprised that even by march you already have a um, penalty attached to your fee so you should pay as early as possible by january 2024 you should run to CAC, run to anybody, uh, chartered accountant, chartered secretary, whoever helps you to register your business, or uh, you go to an uh, authorized person to help you file for your annual returns for 2023. That is in January 2024. So that is how it works. So once your due date is okay, you registered your business in 2021, December, your due date is going to be December 2022, and you're expected to file your annual returns 2023. Do you understand now? So that is just how the annual returns works. You know, it's not just anybody. Nobody. Um, if you are able to register your business yourself, you cannot file your annual returns yourself. The commission didn't allow such. You cannot um, go to the post incorporation portal on your own. You cannot do it with an individual account. So that is that on annual returns. I hope I've answered some people's questions concerning annual returns. And if you have any further, if I uh, further clarifications you want to make or further um, questions feel free to call me feel free to chat feel free to send a message feel free to drop your comments anytime anything to ask for your questions you know we, are, we actually we offer free consultation on all business registrations here yeah? so feel free to ask questions do have a wonderful day thank you